in the past few videos we've seen we've seen how how fats get liberated into the bloodstream how they get into the cell um, how they're oxidized but one thing that we left out and we're saving for now is we left out this guy we left off this guy and this molecule has a special name and it is glycerol and glycerol is the backbone of the triacylglycerides right the oxygens there were tied up in ester bonds with the fatty acids but once we hydrolyze off those fatty acids with the lipases we are left with glycerol right we're left with glycerol but it turns out that the body can actually use glycerol for energy and it's using things that we've already seen so the first enzyme in this pathway is called glycerol that's an e glycerol kinase and this reaction is going to burn an atp and make adenosine diphosphate and essentially what it's going to form is it's going to form something that looks like this it's going to form this so what have i made i've made glycerol phosphate and glycerol phosphate um, is going to be consumed by another enzyme and this enzyme is a reversible reaction it's a reversible reaction but in the direction that it normally runs it's going to generate an NADH and it's going to generate something that you've seen before and I'm going to do this in blue it's going to generate this and I did this in the glycolysis playlist I did this in the glycolysis playlist and you've seen this molecule before this is dihydroxyestone phosphate or I like to call it glycerone phosphate uh, glycerone phosphate but usually you'll see it abbreviated DHAP for dihydroxyacetone phosphate right well if you remember from the glycolysis playlist this thing was sort of useless for glycolysis right you can't directly put this into the glycolytic pathway so you're going to have to interconvert it into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate right and that was catalyzed by and actually let me come back here this enzyme let me go ahead and say I forgot to write this was glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase but this enzyme over here this is called remember triose phosphate isomerase triose phosphate isomerase and in the if so so in other words if i load the body up with glycerol you're going to form a lot of glycerol phosphate and so by le chatelier's principle if I load it up with glycerol phosphate, I'm going to load it up with DHAP, glycerone phosphate, and then it's going to, this equilibrium is going to be pushed towards the production of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, right? Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, right? So, what have we seen? Well, this one right here, this is the, this is the keto, keto triose. And this guy over here is the the aldo triose so essentially they're constitutional isomers of each other and, and, and they're just isomers in general but the, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate is the keto triose and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate or we can abbreviate it right g3p glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is the aldo triose and if you remember glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate can go into the glycolysis at the level of this enzyme and that's g3p dehydrogenase and recall that it attaches a phosphate onto it and also puts in an nad and you get the first nadh out of glycolysis and if you remember what that generates it generates something that looks like this it generates it generates this guy and if you remember the name of this guy it is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate so we can abbreviate that like this 
BPG, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And of course, then that goes on to pyruvate, right? So if we think about this, right, for every one fatty acid, or well, I said for every one triacylglyceride that we metabolize, we get we get one G3P, one glyceraldehyde three phosphate, and in the process of getting to glyceraldehyde three phosphate, we get an NADH. And so, if we think about this, ultimately towards pyruvate, right? For every for every triacylglyceride that we hydrolyze we end up with two NADH, right? One of them came from glycerol, glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase. The other one came from glyceraldehyde three phosphate dehydrogenase. So for every TGA that we, that we hydrolyze, we end up getting two NADHs, right? And actually, we also ultimately end up getting an ATP because this guy right here, this guy gets consumed by phosphoglycerate kinase. So we'll also end up with an ATP from there. So that ATP ends up replacing the one that we burned with glycerol kinase over here to make glycerol phosphate. So the ATP is, is made up for um, by phosphoglycerate kinase. But we end up with two NADHs, and the NADHs, of course, go to the respiratory chain and enter there at NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase, which is complex one. So I hope this video helped, and, and, and really, your, our bodies are, are they're minimalists, but they, they, they're, they're, they, they like to make use of everything. So they're not just going to waste something. Um, if you ever heard of the whole thing like uh, the Native Americans, they, they, the whole thing where they, you know, they didn't waste any part of the buffalo. Well, our bodies work in a very similar manner, right? We use the fatty acids, obviously, but even the glycerol, we're going to use that in some way. We're not just going to waste or throw something out, and ultimately we get two NADHs, and we make up for the loss of ATP. I hope this video helped. See you in the next video.